Hello, everybody. I'm Box Bandy. This is my friend Tim. This is Mobang for you bucks, just like it sounds <laughs> <laughs> on YouTube. And this Tanya Van Life Voyages. Right now, we're at her SEAL team meetup in Lake Isabella. And we, I'm really getting to know Tim, and I want you to get to know him too. So I'm going to do a short interview with him and ask him some questions. Just say what he wants to say. So, Tim, what do you think? Are you ready? Sure, dude. <laughs> We're like... You're, you act all bashful. <laughs> I, went, I went in like this. I didn't hear you. <laughs> all right. So we're going to center on Tim. Tim, why do you... Why do you like boondocking or getting out in your van and traveling and stuff? Well, I like living simple life. And being a minivan camper, the simple is good. Uh, that's true. Very true. I mean, I get a little too complicated these days. <laughs> well, it's a step up. we got the minivan, the regular van, and the box van. Right. Like the sizes step up a little bit. Yeah, and then we have friends over here with, with really RVs nice RVs, but we're all travelers. Mm -hmm. So you came from Vietnam. Yeah, I, came, I migrated to the U.S. back in 1979 and you, as a boat refugee. How old were you? I was 15. You were still with your parents, right? Yes, I'm the only child. So. Oh, only child, really? Okay. What was it like from where you lived? What's the differences? From the Vietnam? Yeah. yeah. It's pretty much the same here. And I came from a kind of like, uh, you know, middle class okay. family. But then after we lost the country to communists, dad, you know, don't want to stay in that kind of, you know, control. So he, uh -huh. he tried to search for a way to escape from Vietnam for four years. And then finally, well, we lost the country in 1975. So okay. 1979 when we made it. So get four out. years you had to live under communist rule? Yeah. Oh, wow. Was that hard? Yes. Yeah. If you see Cuba, how they live, we live pretty much like that. Yeah. Wow. There's nothing. What was it like living there? Just tell me what it was like living there. Even if you have money, it's no it's food? hard to buy food. Oh, okay. Food is very hard to come by. And somebody's always watching, or not? Well, they control for you what you can buy, what you cannot buy. Oh, so really? even you have money, you so can, you want eggs if if they don't nope. allow it, you can't have. They eggs. go by the number of the people in the household, and they they will portion what you support you can buy each month. That's pretty typical. Everything from rice to vegetable to egg to meat. What so about traveling? Could you travel? Okay, so if you want to travel, you have to go to the local cop and ask permission so they can give you a permit to even go to another city. Oh, really? really? Wow. Wow. So here in the U.S., we can go anywhere we want. Oh, this is the best. Big, the big best in the world. Yeah. You do whatever you want. How did they travel? Did they have vehicles just like here? No, not not car like. Most people will either travel public uh, transportation, bus, taxi, you know, one of those little three wheel scooter things. So yeah. that's part of why you like traveling in your little minivan. You can go anywhere, anytime, and as far as you want. Being independent. You know? Yeah. Do they have RVs there? Do people camp? I'm just wondering. Yeah, only rich people oh, can afford it, even to have a big van like yours. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, not, <laughs> like, it's not what you want. <laughs> okay. So now you're living in the States, starting in 79. You were 15 years old. And when what, what happened after that? Well, I came here. I went to high school and I go to college. I wouldn't, didn't do too well in college, so I joined the Air Force. And then... Thank I, you for your service. Thank you. Thank you for supporting thank us. You for your and then I got married and moved back once I get out of the Air Force and become a mailman for 12 years. Oh, wow. For the U.S. Postal yes. Service. Yes. Okay. So did you like that? Not by choice, but it's um, a, a mean it of making a, a living. Yeah. yeah. A means to an end. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So did your wife work too? Yes, she worked. 
for uh, social service. Okay, so, so we all we, we we both government employees, right? Yeah, guess Which so. is a good thing, yeah. really. Well, um, back in the day, people don't want to work for government because um, you don't get paid a lot. Yeah, well, but you get good benefits are yeah. good. Yeah, and retirement's good. Benefits. good yeah. You have a good retirement because of that, right? Well, yeah. Not only that, once I get out of uh, active duty Air Force, I joined the Guard, which is Air National Guard. Okay. So I'm kind of like have a, a job and a half. Okay. Because <laughs> the Air National Guard thing is a part time thing, so it's you know. it's not like standby. It is a standby, it is standby job. Standby. Okay. We train to be ready to go, you know, whenever okay. the government wants us to go, right. and we go. What did you do in the Air Force? I was a uh, aircraft mechanics. Oh, mechanic! No wonder you, you know how to fix everything on stuff, the cars mechanics. and stuff. <laughs> well, I always Makes grew sense. up with being handy with my hand anyway. Yeah. Because back in the old day, when you know, Dad always make me holding branches and screwdriver handed to him yeah. when he fixed the car. So I learned it from him. So. Wow, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. So you seem to be able to take any problem and come up with a solution to it. So that's really cool. Do you have other family that lives here in the U.S.? No, I do have family, but yeah, not not close to me. Like I said, I'm the only child. So. so you have children? Yes, I got two boys. Two boys? Well, two grown men. Now. How old are they? One is twenty, twenty-seven. Okay. The other one is twenty-five. Okay. They do they they live at home? Of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. The kids now, they, they got smart. Like they don't mine. want to They out. did get smart, huh? Yeah. Now parents I'm keep like, their kids I'm like, home. mine don't, and they're the same ages. Mine are <laughs> out. No. So if I ask you anything that feels too personal, feel free to say, let's talk about something else or sure. change the subject. Sure. Okay. <laughs> That's why you interview me. <laughs> I know, exactly. Okay, so right now you're camping here at Lake Isabel. What did you bring with you? What did you come in? You, you see, that's what I didn't bring. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, okay, I brought some banh mi, which is like Vietnamese sandwich. Uh -huh. And I bought some pho, which is Vietnamese soup. Right, and we all have that already. <laughs> and then we, all, we, were all then we still already. have Korean barbecue yeah. in the freezer and egg roll. <laughs> so a lot of people on YouTube already know you, Tim. <laughs> they love your cooking. <laughs> and it, we all do, too, of course. We always make egg rolls for almost every meetup he goes to. <laughs> but we need to give you some help. He it's needs a, become too big of a job for a one person. Tip jar too. Yeah, a tip jar. That's a good idea. Let's put a tip jar out for Tim when he does yeah, all this cooking. Exactly. I mean, yeah. So, okay. So you came in uh, your Me, little. I got a 2008 Toyota Sienna minivan. And I convert myself into a little camper for one person. Yeah. So we'll do a tour of that later. In sure. the meantime, okay, so let's see. Tell us something we don't know about you. <laughs> I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think I, I, I think I pretty much share everything about what me. What don't you like about camping? There's nothing I don't like. Nothing you don't like. It's not too much uh, work. No. Uh, before I even do all this, I used to live in uh, Malaysia. Remember, I was both forever refugee. Yes. So we didn't come straight here. Okay. We we landed up in Malaysia, mm. and the Malaysia government put all the refugees in this one island, like one kilometer square okay. kilometer. Ooh. Forty thousand people on it. Oh my goodness. And. They did build some kind of building, but it's too crowded. So right. if you want to be, be comfortable, you you're moving up in the hill and build your own little hut with whatever you find there. It's actually a little wood, a lot of trees. Yeah. So we went and chopped out trees and branches oh. and make hut out. You literally <coughs> yeah. built it from the wood, yeah. from the trees. Yeah. So you lived in that for how long that was? Nine months. Nine months. I wow, nine months. So I'm pretty much self-sufficient. You, you, you learn, you have to. <laughs> so you learned also to cook, cook from scratch. You didn't every have day, ready made food. Since I'm the only child, every day I have to go get, get them actually. Yeah, can you? yeah, it's okay. Did your parents make you cook and everything? No, I don't cook. My job is to, in the morning, I go get fresh water. Oh, at the And then uh, about maybe noon, I go get the food supply. You know, on the island, you have no food. 
So you have to catch it or what? <laughs> <laughs> like when yeah, you us. Fish? We're, we're only about maybe three miles from the mainland, so okay. they have barge that will oh, bring, bring food out for us. Vegetable, oh. eggs. Did you uh, get me? better food than in the communist when you were in Malaysia, or about the same? They just yeah, it's that. about the same. Oh, it's okay. about the same. But it's free, yeah, <laughs> and you don't have to go buy it. line up to buy it. That's right. true. And lines forever, huh? That's true. So that's my job is to go get water, food, and then mom will be cooking, and then of course, and we only have one set of clothes. Oh wow! So you oh, wash yeah. it in the river, or the yeah, house. you 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 go bake yourself next to the glue creek. Mm -hmm. You wash your clothes. Of course, we all fully butt naked while we do it. And then you put How did a, you cook on a wood fire? Or what? Yeah, wood. I so actually built. So he's been camping forever. Yeah. It seems like. I actually built a, a little uh, kitchen area on the side of the hut. Oh wow! Cause there's clay there, and then I watch other people, and then we have canned food. So I reuse the can, metal yeah, can, for for chimney coming out of oh, wood wow. burner. That so was I, your pan. <laughs> He's making wow. stuff way back then, a yeah. teenager. I'm, you I'm had a, a very interesting life for a long time. So, wow. That's why I love being, even though I'm not nomad, but I live life like a nomad. Well, you <laughs> have a home base. Yeah. Yes. And you still, you actually probably travel tens of times more than me right now. I can't travel all the time like I used to. Well, I'm and blessed with being still young and have yeah. good health. So I try to do as much as I can yeah. now before the health doesn't allow it anymore. You've made tons of friends. I know. <laughs> That's why I like about this, yeah. going meet them. <laughs> so you have a YouTube channel, and what kinds of stuff do you put on your channel? Yeah. It's mostly the DIY stuff, because yeah. I, I fix everything myself. <laughs> the channel name tells a little bit about you. Mo, how did you come up with the, with the channel name? Well, the four word is Ma Bang for your bucks. Yeah. You can't fit five words into the channel name, so I kind of shrink it down to Mo Bang and then for your bucks. Right. Mo Bang for your bucks. Instead of more. Yeah, <laughs> right. they took that off. So what does that mean? I mean, if you're going to be able to fix it yourself or do things cheap, you get more bang for your buck. Yeah, he calls himself cheap. I call him frugal <laughs> <laughs> because he does. He does recycles things, things a like lot. you'll hear him say, "I did a curtain out of the plastic tablecloth from the dollar store," <laughs> or <laughs> you know things like that. So everything you do on your channel is done the cheapest way you can come up with it. Sometimes you do have to spend a little bit of money. But for the most part, you stick it around to the cheaper stores and whatever works, it may only be temporary. You may have to throw that plastic tablecloth away, right? right. That's why I am, am try it out. Then if it works, I will let them know it works or not. So you don't right. have to waste your money. That's why so, you get more bang for your bucks. <laughs> exactly. So if you don't know Tim, please go check out his channel. Give him some support and tell him you saw me on Fox Bandy and Tanya. Um, so, in, any closing re remarks, some advice you can give somebody? Just do whatever you can right now. Don't wait. Yeah, don't wait. wait. Even time, if you just do weekends. Yeah, time right? don't wait for nobody. You never know what's going to happen. So Tomorrow you may have, never come. Yeah. If you have spare time just to go local, yeah. whatever, just do it. So you don't have to have a lot of money to get out and travel, enjoy life, get outdoors and, you know, get out in nature. Look at the, we're on the lake. I'll show you the lake in a little bit. But we're on the lake enjoying a great time here with friends. That's what you do when you get out and travel a little bit. You meet new people, make new friends, build your community. Right. Right. So. If we didn't do this, none of us would know each other. That's what it right. comes up, down and to. By the way, yeah. this is a lifetime friend now. You know? yeah. exactly. Where else exactly. are you going to go make life a lifelong friend? Exactly. And it's funny, this is a smaller gathering. I'm glad you did this, Tanya, for your SEAL team members. Because I really am getting to know Tim. I have, he's been yeah, this smart. is like, what, fifth yeah. time I meet 
deep yeah, and then have a one-on-one time. On one time. Yeah. You've been in my meetups and everything, but I really people. never got to just really talk to you. Right. I was always so busy with people. So this is a very special time with you. Thank you so much. I feel special. <laughs> you are special. He does so much for everybody, too. Yeah, he's a giver. This is a man as a giver. Tim, before, before I let you go, I want you to tell us your story about your rooster. Yeah, I used to have a rooster. He behaved like a dog. This is in Vietnam, yes. right? I raised him from the chick and, you know, Somebody tried to steal him, they can't. So he always go in the middle of the car, they can't catch him. And I named him Tiny in Vietnamese Tiny. Mm -hmm. And when I call his name, he would answer it. Really? Would, like, Tiny! And he would say, ah! And he'd come back out and look at the window, see his meat, and I can grab him. And one time, I told him, go back and call mom to go open the door. He'd go back to the kitchen and jank her, her, her trouser, <laughs> come up and open the door. <laughs> Just like a dog. And he even take nap in the afternoon with me. Really? And one time he pooped on me, I slapped the heck out of him, and he never do that again. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Thank That's you one for thing sharing the know. funny story. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank Bye. you. <laughs> so we'll be doing a full tour of Kim's uh, SUV, how he built it out, and showing you the cheapest and easiest way to go camping on a shoestring budget. So I hope you'll watch for that. Also, we are doing a video of the meetup that we have Van Life Voyages in Lake Isabella. So I hope you watch for that too. Thank you for watching and su subscribing, liking the videos and comments. Hope you enjoyed this.